Hey there YouTube, this is SGM4306 back with another video, and this time I guess it's a uh, mailbag. Just got this uh, in the mail today, just got back, uh, and I ate dinner as well. Oh, that was a fail. <sighs> okay, fine, then we have to do this the hard way. And inside the bag is another bag. So, bag exception. And inside that bag, oh wow! actually came with a random game shoved in which isn't even for this system and it actually came with the battery flap in the picture I saw this was a uh, sold as is uh, not powering on or something like that and um, they only took a picture of the front so I expected it would be missing the battery door but it has it included it's a little bit grubby but um, I was not expecting a Game Boy Advance game shoved in there um, not too crazy. I, I don't really know about Powerpuff Girls, so I'll probably just give this to my sister since I think she's into that. But let me grab some AA batteries and see if this fires up. I'll grab a game too. Actually, maybe I have the batteries. Okay, I got a game, and this time it actually is the game for this console. <laughs> and some AAA batteries. Let's see if this fires up at all. Oh, power switch was already on and there was absolutely no power, so yeah, um, they were not lying. So, next, uh, next thing is to actually pop this open and see uh, what the in inside already looks like. Well, I can already see the inside, but you know what I mean. To actually start probing stuff. Uh, the power switch is kind of loose feeling, so maybe that is an issue. Maybe it needs to be cleaned. It uh, could be the DC-DC converter <coughs> or something that just failed on the 5-volt line that's uh, pulling that rail down. But yeah, um, let me just get this open. Yeah, before we actually um, test this, I forgot to mention that I got this for um, $10 and then $10 shipping. So not a great price, but actually not horrible for what um, these like limited edition sort of rarer um, type Game Boy Pockets go for, especially the clear ones with the power indicator tend to go for a little bit more. So these guys usually go for, in working condition, like $30 to $60, something like that, depending on condition. But obviously this does not, you know, look very great so uh, I think 20 bucks is fair for this and even if I can't get it to work I can just swap out the board and whatnot the shell's still useful for me anyway let's see if this works okay so I got all the screws out and I was just messing around with it because the uh, the battery can the uh, springs and whatnot looked a little bit corroded and the switch is a little gimmicky but I was actually able to get it to turn on and the screen is as far as I can tell perfect and no audio though, volume's up all the way. Uh, I checked with headphones and audio does come out, so it definitely works. And all the buttons work. As you can see, I'm playing. Anyway, I can just sit here and play this all day. Yeah. Everything works, uh, other than obviously the volume, there's something up. Either the speaker's dead or maybe a capacitor in the audio amplifier. Though I'm kind of doubting that because uh, headphone output works, so maybe it's the uh, headphone switch. Anyway, this really needs to clean and this switch needs to be really cleaned as well. Uh, so we're going to do that. I've shown this millions of times. Well, not millions, but I've shown this a lot of times. But anyway, we'll go through this once again. Okay, so we have the uh, Game Boy Pocket open here, and it's quite dirty. And so there's two things that we need to fix, remember. The power switch is a little bit mm, flaky, and the audio doesn't work at all. Uh, so first thing I'm going to check is the audio. So let's see if the speaker still works at all, because that'll be the easiest fix if it's just the, uh, the speaker's blown. So we're going to take our multimeter and put it on low ohm range. So I'm 200 ohms right now. 
and we'll be able to see if we connect it, it should go to a low value. Speakers are pretty low impedance. So for instance, um, this is a speaker pulled out of a cell phone. And if we measure it, it should measure a pretty low value. In this case, it's like 32 ohms. Uh, these speakers are probably gonna be around, I don't know, eight ohms, something like that, maybe 16. Uh, but we should measure something. So let's just probe the points on the back of the speaker. And I think we found our answer. So it's zero. So the speaker itself is blown, which is probably a good sign because if not, I would have to start messing around with the contacts inside the uh, headphone jack and or maybe some of these capacitors might be dead. So luckily for this exact purpose, I keep spare uh, Game Boy Pockets around. And this one, um, I forget what's wrong with this one. I think uh, this one has a dead power regulator or something. And it, the shell's in really bad condition. Uh, but um, this is good enough. I actually already have the speaker desoldered, apparently. Um, so just going to clean this speaker up a little bit. There's some crustiness going on inside and um, solder this in and see if this works. Okay. So this is the old speaker. And... So it looks like uh, this speaker has some gunk in it, so I'll see how it sounds. If it sounds like muffled or something, then I'll find another replacement. Uh, but this should be good enough for now. My iron's heated up. Just going to remove this guy. And there we go. Old speaker out. Let's see. Where is that pin? Okay, so the new speaker is now soldered in. Just gonna tuck these wires a little bit, and just gonna put the back shell in for now. I don't need the LCD to test audio, so put this in. Put in a game. And batteries. Let's see, turn the audio up. Audio works. So, let's see. Just gonna try to start a game. Kinda hard to do without a screen. <laughs> There we go. So volume control works. So yeah, um, so good sign is um, everything works in terms of the audio, the rest of the chain, it was just the speaker. So what I'm going to do now is um, clean up the speaker because it's a little crusty inside. And um, let's now work on the uh, power switch. That was the second thing that was wrong with this unit. So here's some 91% uh, isopropyl alcohol. I'm just gonna get a uh, cotton bud, 
slash Q-tip slash whatever you want to call it. Soak it in isopropyl. And just sort of press it into the switch. And then work this back and forth a bunch of times. Now what this is doing is um, it's scraping away the the corrosion on the pins. Um, metal tends to oxidize over time, especially if there's a moisture involved. And you can see some of the metal looks a little tarnished around the power switch, so it's very likely that this was kept in a humid place. So we're just going to clean that off. And it's feeling better already. And we're going to do another test, make sure it turns on straight away now. Actually, we don't need a cart for this. Just batteries. Yep. That's actually a lot better. Now it turns on every single time. There we go. So, now the electronics fully work. So, less than a couple minutes actually, barely any time at all. Um, less than five minutes I was able to fix audio problem, switch problem, everything else works. So I'm gonna give the shell, the board actually looks pretty clean for the most part, but I'm going to give the, uh, the shell a good clean because it is a little bit dirty, not the dirtiest I've ever seen. Uh, but I've done plenty of videos on that, so I'm not gonna make you guys sit through the cleaning, but I'm gonna get this all together and then show you guys the end results. Okay, so how did it turn out? Well, I did my regular old clean. I soaked everything in warm, soapy water, put the buttons through the ultrasonic cleaner, got all that settled. And um, yeah, so other than having to replace the speaker, I just uh, put some isopropyl in the, the switch and everything seems to work perfectly fine now. You can turn it on. Screen works, obviously, it looks beautiful. Audio works. There we go. Don't want to get a copyright strike or anything from Nintendo. But yeah, this is all good to go. There is a tiny little bit of damage. It looks like um, maybe it was dropped on the corner here, and maybe that's what killed the speaker, actually, because thinking about the proximity of the speaker to that, um, maybe there was some sort of uh, damage or something like that. Um, but easy enough fix, and for uh, $10 plus a couple dollars shipping, um, I was able to get one of these clear skeleton uh, Game Boy Pockets, so um, there are definitely deals still to be had, and if you're handy with uh, fixing and debugging problems, you can get yourself a, um, like a pretty nice uh, Game Boy Pocket or DMG, um, even one of the limited edition ones, uh, for pretty cheap nowadays. So anyway, hopefully you guys uh, aren't getting bored of these, these random repair videos. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you guys have had any experience in repairing Game Boys yourself, um, tell your stories down below. I'd be interested to hear, um, you know, everyone's take on this. Um, anyway, I've rambled on for long enough. And there's that sound again. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.